Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So this is the 11th lecture of the dynamic programming playlist. Yes. Till now we have done uh, DP on grids. Like we have done three problems on the DP on grids where there was a shuttle pattern where we always stated that the starting point is zero zero and the ending point is n minus one and m minus one. This was the pattern of questions that we have done. Now going forward, I'll be solving three problems. Yes, three problems where we will be having variable starting points. Yes, might be there like there might be a variable or a fixed starting point and the ending point will also be variable. When we will see the questions, you will understand what does variable mean. But yeah, the variable, it will be variable. That's that's going to be the next set of three questions. So in order to start off, uh, we will be taking the first question, which is triangle. So yeah, without without wasting any time, let's get started. It states that you're given a triangular array. Or that's basically a triangle. Your task is to return the minimum path sum to reach from the top uh, till the bottom row. The triangle array uh, will have n rows and the ith row will have i plus one elements. So let's understand this. So basically there will be n rows and the ith row will be having i plus one elements. Now you can move only to adjacent number of row below each step. For example, if you are at an index j in a row i, then you can move to i or i plus one index in the row j plus one in each, each step. I'll explain you this. So uh, this is the example. So let, let me just quickly write this down over in the iPad. So if you see over here, what the question stated was, this is the zero row. It will have one element. This is the first row. It will have two elements. The second row will have three elements. So that's why it's right angle triangle. Got this? Now it states that if you are over here, yes, if you're over here on a given row, you can move right to the bottom of the next row or you can move diagonally to the next row. So basically assume you are standing over here, you can move either to here or you can move either to six, but you can't move to 10 or neither you can move to eight. So either you can move di uh, diagonally, diagonally or right straight bottom. So they have said that there is a starting point. Okay, so over here, we need to understand that the starting point is fixed. Okay, so the starting point is fixed. What about the ending point? They're saying that the ending point might vary. Yes, the ending point might vary because what they are concerned is as long as you're reaching the last row, you can either reach here, you can either reach here, or you can either reach here, or you can either reach here. As long as you're reaching the start ending ending row, we are satisfied. And in order to reach from the first row till the last row, there might be a path. Uh, how many different paths can be there? You might go from here to here, then from here to here, then from here to here. There can be some path like one, two, three, three to seven, seven to 10. There can be something like one, two, three, eight, right bottom. There can be a lot of paths, okay? And in these paths, whichever path takes the minimum path sum, you have to tell me that. So for an example, I can say I can go from one to two to three and to eight. And this is like eight plus two is 10, 13, 14. So 14 is the minimum path sum. You can try out all the paths and the minimum that you will get is indeed 14. So going across, how do you identify that a greedy solution is will fail? Again, uniformity concept that I have explained to you in the previous videos, if you have seen it's not uniform because it might happen over here greedily you choose two and again greedily you choose three and uh, like greedily you're choosing right and might happen somewhere down the line there is a very smaller value you miss out just because you're choosing something which is very very small on the upper half so uniformity is not there because the values might be bigger might be lesser so whenever there is no uniformity in the incre increment of values or decrement of values then we can say that something like a greedy cannot be applied. Something like a greedy cannot be applied. So what do we tend to apply over there? Yes, we try out all the paths. We try out all the paths, right? And um, how do you do that? Again, very simple. 
we know we just have one way to try out all the paths that is we travel through all the paths and that can be done using recursion and by using recursion what you need to do is you need to find the path which gives you the minimum sum and once you have done this you are done so in the grid, grid problems what have i told you i've told you represent everything in terms of indexes and what are the indexes over here i and j because in a grid we will always have the row number and the column number what is the next thing that i have told you explore all the paths so if you remember over here yes over here the paths what kind of paths are there either you can go here or either you can go diagonally right and after that you take the minimal of all the paths and if you write these three steps down you can easily write any recurrence can you write any recurrence right you can but now the question arises striver in all the previous videos we did know that the ending point was something like n minus 1 and m minus 1 so striver we started from the back like f of n minus 1 m minus 1 and we did write the recursion but over here there is not a fixed ending point that is very obvious because we can either end here 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 so there is no fixed ending point so uh, logically it will not make sense if i write the recurrence because I, I might be ending here i might be ending here so there can be four different recurrence one that starts from here the other that starts from here the other that starts from here the other that starts from here there can be four different kind of recurrence in the previous video there was only one recurrence that you called and you got the answer but over here you have to call four different recurrence one is from here one is from here one is from here one is from here and in all the four recurrence whichever recurrence gives you the minimum path that will be your answer right but whenever you see that there is a single fixed point like i can see that there is a single fixed point logically it is preferable that you start from uh, right the top and you try to go down that's the preferable logic so we will try to implement that preferable logic instead of starting from the back which we have usually done in all the problems we will not do because over here we have to start from four different columns basically the number of columns is what i have to start that's not preferable that's why what we do is we start the recursion from f of 0 0 and what we say is hey listen over here f of 0 0 signifies the minimum pass minimum path sum from 0 0 to last row and in last row it can be any column i don't i don't care it can start from 0 0 and go till the last row so we have figured out that the recurrence has to start from instead of f of n minus 1 m minus 1 we know the recurrence will start from 0 comma 0 that is something which we have figured out and i have told you the reason right that's time to write the recurrence so we know the recurrence is something like i comma j correct so what do we initially write if i'm writing this represent i j then we have to write the base case what is the base case what am i doing try to think in that direction what am i doing i know that i'm starting from here i know that i'm starting from here and i am going down i will go down and when do i end from this row can i go further down where is your destination generically the destination is your base case i know the destination is the n minus one -th row so i know whenever i reach n minus one -th row whichever value is there that will simply get added to the answer so what i can do is okay if i reach n minus 1 through by any chance if i reach n minus 1 through i can say that please please return whatever is there on that jth column like if i'm reaching any of the columns yes if i'm reaching this guy i'll return 8 to be added to the answer i'll return 9 i'll return 6 i'll return 10 whichever column i ended i'll be returning that so that is how we will be doing this correct so we have figured out the first base case what can be the other base case can you try to think yes you probably can try to think so if i if i talk about where am i moving i'm moving till bottom and to the right will we ever uh, go out of boundary try to think for this guy 
this is the extremist guy on the zero throw. Does it have a diagonal? Yes. Does this guy have a diagonal? Yes. Does this guy have a diagonal? Yes. We've reached the last throw. So I know no matter how you move, because we can only move down and diagonal, we will never, never go outside this boundary. So we know that there will be no out outside boundary condition. So there is only one base case. So step one completed. Now step two, explore all the paths. And we know we are looking for minimum path sum. What kind of path is there? One is this. I know this is nothing but i plus 1j. We go to the next row and the same column. And we know this is i plus 1. Next row, but the right column. Right column will mean i plus 1, j plus 1. Everyone knows that, right? What's the next step? The next step is very simple. Explore all the paths. So what paths do you have? You have one down path which states the current you will take and you will ask like basically you took the current and you said go down and figure out the answer for the rest of matrix. You, you took the current and you said go down and figure out the answer for the rest of the matrix. So you're saying okay go down and figure out the answer for the rest of the matrix. Or you're saying go diagonal and figure out the answer for the rest of the matrix from that step. So that's what you've done. So basically what does this condition mean? You're basically saying okay listen take one and go to this guy. So this guy states, I have to figure out the answer that I'll take from here to reach here, right? Or if you would have gone diagonally, it would have been going here. So you have taken one and you're saying you're here now. You're asking in this triangle from here in order to reach here, figure out the minimal cost path sum. So you have written one down and one diagonal and you've taken the path sum, the current and the remaining that it will give. So what we have done, the next step is also done. Explore all the paths. What is the third step? Minimal of all the paths. Yes. So can I say I will return the minimal of D and DG, which is down and diagonal. So I can just complete the function. This is how the recurrence will be pretty straightforward, right? So we have written down the recurrence. Now, if I ask you the time complexity, what will be the time complexity of this recursion? Now, how many, uh, like if I, if I ask you how many rows and columns are there, then the first row has one column. So basically one column, then the next row has two column, next row has three column and so on. We have N plus one columns at the last Nth row. That's, or I think N, N column rather. We have exactly n column at the last row. So what we know is these are the number of rows. And for every column, we have couple of options, either to go down or to go bottom. So we can say twice into twice across every one, right? So two to the power, the summation of this, two to the power summation of this, which is exponential in nature, because you're going twice for every one, right? Recursion. And the space complexity, there will be a stack space involved. What will be the stack space? You're going from the zeroth row to the bottom. So the length of the rows, which is B go of N. So I can say the recursion is this. And you know how to convert a recursion, like how to optimize this. The best way is to figure out, are there overlapping sub problems? And I will not be doing any more recursion tree because this is the 11th lecture of the DP series. And I'm of the assumption that you have been seeing the DP series from the first lecture. So you all know what is overlapping sub problems. If you want to figure out, are there overlapping sub problems? What you just need to do is you need to start from F of zero, zero, go across to F of one comma zero, go across to F of one comma one, keep on going. This will be F of the next one will be a two comma zero. The next one will be F of two comma one. This will be like f of two comma one. This will be f of uh, something like one. Uh, sorry, two comma two. So you see the first step. This is the first step where you get overlapping sub problems. So we are seeing there will always be overlapping sub problems if you draw the tree. I said I'll not draw, but still I did draw. So if you draw this, you will see that there are overlapping sub problems. And you know whenever there are overlapping sub problems, what can you apply? Yes, you can apply something as memoization yes you can apply something as memoization 
Now, what's the next step? Can I see this? Can I see this? But if I can apply memoization, I need to figure out what can be the maximum value of i, what can be the maximum value of j. I know we can at max have n rows and n columns. So we will be requiring an n cross n dp. So what's the next step? Very simple guys. You just take dp of i j. Done. Next, if dp of i j is not equal to minus one, you can return dp of i j. That's what all that's 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 what you just need to do. And if you're able to do this, it should be absolutely fine with the memoization solution. So once you convert it into a memoization solution, what is the time complexity? Can I say the time complexity will be the number of states, which is n into n and the space complexity, like it will not be exactly n into n because uh, it's a triangle, right? Uh, like if you if you think it properly, it's a triangle. So one state, two states, so these will be the number of states, which is one plus two plus three plus this portion of the DP will not be required, but I'm not going into depth. You will, you can understand if you just do a dry run on yourself, I'm not going into the depth. So the time complexity, like you can just generically say this is the time complexity and the space complexity will be this, which is recursion stack space. And I've already uh, told you about what is recursion stack space. So this is the time complexity and the recursion stack space. Perfect guys. Okay. So how do you remove the stack space? Because you know, in a lot of platforms, you will get TLA time limit exceeded. So in order to do that, you just need to write the tabulation method. So first, this is going to be slightly different from the previous ones. In the previous problems, we did recursion from n minus one till zero. And over here, we did the recursion from uh, zero to rather the last row. So it isn't like now we will be calling just because we wrote the recursion from uh, zero to uh, n last row. It doesn't mean it's uh, bottom up, right? Recursion always is top down, is always top down because this is where you start. You go down, you go down, then you compute the base case, then you re-accommodate to get the final answer. So top down, then you go. So never ever, right? So over here, the recursion that you wrote was from zero to n minus one. So the base case will be like the tabulation will be the opposite. It's a thumb rule. Whatever you write for recursion, the opposite is the tabulation, right? So that's something which is a thumb rule. Now let's look at the base case. Let's go across. So by the way, uh, the first thing in tabulation everyone knows is declare a DP of size N cross N is something which you have to declare. Correct. Now going across, what do I uh, see in the recursion? This is the base case. How many base cases can we have? If I'm saying I is N minus one, what were the possible values of J? The possible values of J, if I just go uh, to the example, zero, one, two, three, so there can be four different rows. There can be four, sorry, four different columns. Because once you might reach here, this might be a base case. You might reach here, this is a base case. You might reach here, this is a base case. You might reach here, this is a base case. So there can be four different base cases, agreed? So if I'm saying that there can be four different base cases, I just need to write it. So I know for sure that J, there can be J equal to zero till J lesser than N. So all the columns and I know N minus one will stay common, but this column number will always change because it might be the first column. And every time I just need to make sure I take the value from the matrix because this is what I have been doing in the recursion, right? We have been writing this only, right? Return this. What can be the J? J can be zero, one, two, and three, which is up till N minus one. That's what I wrote in the base case. So something different from the previous ones, we have written the base case ourselves. So you have written this particular base case. What is the next step? The next step is definitely writing the for loop. So we need to understand if we write the recurrence from zero to N minus one, the, tab the tabulation will be opposite. Why? Because you know, the base case is N at N minus one. 
So you fill the table from n minus 1, then to n minus 2, then to n minus 3, and so on. You go on till 0, 0. So you go opposite, right? So what I know is there will be the row number i will definitely start from n minus 2. There's no need to do for n minus 1 because you've already done for it. We go till 0 and i minus minus. Now remember, whenever you, you write tabulation, you go and see what are the recurrences. There is an i and there's a j. So for an i, what can be the particular j's? You think in your brain. So if I say, if i is 0, what can be the possible j? I'll be like, for 0th row, there will be 0 columns. I'll be like, yes. If i is 1, how many j's can be there? 0 and 1. If i is 2, how many j's can be there? 0, 1, 2. If i is 3, how many j's can be there? 0, 1, 2, 3. Because it's a triangle. It's a triangle. So can I say, that whatever is the value of i, that's equivalent to the number of columns it can have. So I figured out how many possible columns will I have for a particular i. So first variable you will write, and then you will create a nested loop. That's a tabulation concept for j. So create the nested loop for the tabulation concept. So I create a nested loop for the tabulation concept. And what did I tell you? The nested, now you might ask, okay, Strive, now how will the nested loop run? Now the nested loop will also run in the similar fashion. How did j move? j move like plus plus, right? Plus one something. You run the nested loop in the opposite direction, which is j equal to i, j greater than or equal to zero, j minus minus. If you're moving both of them in the plus plus, the tabulation will be the opposite. That's it. That's the simple tabulation nested. For every i, you write the particular j. That's it. And after that, copy paste the recurrence. What is the recurrence? A of i j plus f of i plus 1 j. That is the recurrence relationship, right? So you write dp of i plus 1 j. Or the other one, you wrote dg equal to a of i j is a of i j plus dp of i plus 1 and j plus 1. Perfect. And then you wrote dp of i j equal to minimum of d comma dg. What will be the answer? What is the recursion that you call to get the answer? The recursion that you call to get the answer was f of 0 comma 0. So over here the answer will be print of dp of 0 and 0. That's it. That is the answer. Yes, that is the answer. Perfect. So what is the time complexity now? Again, we go of n into n because that's that's the kind of like near about n into n because over here it's not exactly n loop. It's the number of rows. So you can say that it's slightly less than that. But yeah, near about. What about the space complexity? No more recursion uh, stack space. By the way, uh, I think in the memorization part, oh, we, we just wrote a recursion stack space. We did not write the uh, tabulation that was used. So the recursion stack space has been omitted. And I just left off with this n cross it n matrix that you're using for this particular DP table. So we have made sure that the space complexity of the recursion uh, the, of the stack space has been removed. Can we optimize this? Yes. Why? I did tell you. If there is something like i plus 1, if there is something like i plus 1, you can always do it. So why don't you do it? And what's the rule? Just store the previous. Keep exchanging. Remember? So what is the next thing? Space optimization. And that is the speciality about this series, isn't it? What have I told you? Whenever you see something like i minus 1, like till now, it was i minus 1 because it was a previous. Over here, we are seeing something as, what are we seeing? i plus 1. So how, how will this DP uh, table fill up? So I'll always recommend in order to understand space complexity better, like our space optimization better, try to do a dry run of this table format that uh, the guy Tushar Roy does. Like we have seen his videos, you will understand how he, like he just comes up and writes the formula and fills up the DP table. So now you know how to, how to derive this particular formula. Now you can just fill up the DP table. So if you try to fill up the DP table, what happens is the last row is the base case, which is automatically filled. Like I'm just 
uh, filling up uh, like random numbers. It's not zero, it's some dots. And then you start from this guy and then you are like, fill up this, fill up this, fill up this. Then you go to this guy and you're like, fill up this, fill up this. Then you go to this guy and you say, fill up this. And whatever is here, you say, this is my answer. So how did the DP table fill up? First, the base case. And in order to get this, what you did was, you took this guy plus this or this guy plus this, right? In order to fill up this guy, what you did was, you took this plus this or this plus this. That is what this line is doing. You have IJ plus DP, like the next guy. You have IJ plus DP. That's what it is doing. If you try to do a dry run. In order to fill up this, it's taking this plus this or this plus this. Similarly, in order to fill up this, it's taking this plus this or this plus this. So can I say in order for like in order to solve any row, I'm just requiring this particular row. In order to solve this row, I'm just requiring this particular row. In order to solve this row, I'm just requiring this particular row. So can I say once this is the base case, I compute this particular row, then I'm not requiring this. I'll just delete it. Then I compute this row, I'll not require this deleted. Then I'll compute this row, I'll not require it deleted. So can I say, instead of storing the entire triangle, I just need to store two rows, two rows. One is the uh, previous or like the front row. And one is the current row that you are traversing. And once this current row is computed and you move to this guy, this current row becomes the front row. Can I say this? I can. That's what you have to just do in the code. Just make sure you store this particular guy. Like what you can do is always remember, always, always uh, try to create a like over here. You can say the front row. So really you can write something as front row of size n. And over here, instead of this, you can write front of j and the front row is computed. So the front is computed by this. Next, this is front. I plus one is front. The entire I plus one is front. So you write front, correct? Now, instead of carrying DP of IJ, because DP of IJ means, understand, DP of IJ means this guy, this guy, this guy. So instead of DP of IJ, what you say is, you just create this particular row. Let's create one more row. So what you basically do is, you say, okay, what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to do anything. I'll be like, let's create the current row. Like you can create of a lesser size, but I'll just take it curve. And instead of DP of IJ, you will be like curve of J. And once the entire row has been created by this particular for loop, you know this particular current for the next I will become the front. So you'll say front, who's the front? The current will be the front for the next I because I will go minus minus. That's the space optimization. And once you do the space optimization, you can be like, okay, I've done the space optimization. So now the time complexity is still the same, but the space complexity has boiled down to big of n. Like it's twice of n, but yeah, it's, it's near about big of n. We're not using an n cross n matrix. You know, we're just using a couple of rows and we're able to compute the entire answer. And can I say, can I say at the end of the day, whenever you're doing I minus minus in the first loop, you're doing I minus minus over here. What is the ending point of I? When this loop ends, I will be minus one and the current will be stored in front. So the answer will be stored in front of zero, right? Very obvious. That's how you can space optimize this particular stuff. So I've already written the pseudo codes in the iPad, but I'll still write the code so that you have a quick revision kind of a thing. So you're basically given the triangle and N, which uh, recommends the number of rows. So what you can do is you can definitely write a function. So let's quickly write a function where we will, we know that we will have a couple of changing parameters, which is I T I J. We will be uh, requiring this vector triangle and the N. So let's quickly take this off. I know that if we reach the last row, that's over, right? So we can definitely return triangle N minus one J. So that's the base case that we have covered. And there will be a D, which will be a triangle IJ plus F of I plus one J, which is basically the down path. There will be a DG, which will be triangle 
i j plus f of i plus 1 and j plus 1 correct and uh, don't forget to uh, pass on the extra parameters that's important and at the end of the day you know you have to return the minimal of down and the diagonal path so can you return that over here you can return the function 0 comma 0 the triangle and the size n now you can quickly run it off it does run but it will give you a tle uh, because it's a recursive solution and it will be exponential so what you need to do is you definitely need to create a dp array so please create a dp array of size n cross n initialize with minus 1 pass it as the next parameter so you can just copy paste this yeah, this will be dp so just make sure it's a dp over here make sure you pass one more dp so first step is done by just declaring and passing the parameter what's the next step initialize the answer so please initialize the answer what is the next step if dp of ij is not equal to minus one you can return dp of ij and that should be perfect now you can run this code it's running fine and if i try to submit this it says partially accepted uh, because it's getting time limit exceeded as i said uh, a lot of times it will happen that the recursive memorization will give you time limit exceeded that is when uh, you need to do is you just need to convert that into a tabulation format so over here what i can do is you can just put in an n of zero and i know there is a last row that has to be filled so kindly fill up the last row that's very simple dp of the last row and the column will be nothing but the triangle of the last row and the column that's how you can easily fill that up and apart from that there will be a couple of nested loops uh, right starting from the back so you can just run it off there will also be a for intj equal to starting from the back and it can go on something like this and i know there will be a couple of paths which is intd so basically uh, you just need to make sure you copy this stuff that's it nothing special just make sure you copy the stuff and instead of f you need to create a dp of i plus one and a j that's the shuttle change that you need to do instead of f that will always be dp of the recurrence that you're calling so just carry it on dp of i plus one uh, to j plus one that's how you'll do it and at the end of the day you can say dp of i j will be minimal of d comma dg so once you have done this you know what will you return you will always return dp of zero zero because that's sorry dp of is it zero zero yeah that's zero zero so zero zero is what you are going to return let's quickly run this off should be running fine yeah it does run let's quickly submit this off and let's see if this is getting your tle okay this is not giving okay so this uh appears to be the correct answer and you're getting your 100 percent score so now what are the changes that i require what's the next step space optimization let me quickly raise this off to get some space we need space optimization right so we need to delete this and we just need to store the last row so what we can do is we can say vector of int of probably front row we can call it as front rather of n comma zero okay and instead of dp of n minus one we call it as front and make sure you also have a current row initialized as n cross zero now what i know is triangle of ij plus dp of i plus 1 so instead of i plus 1 i'll say front instead of again i plus 1 i'll say front very obvious instead of dp of i i'll always say cur and over here i'll make sure the front is reinitialized with cur that's what i just need to do and over here instead of dp of 0 i'll say front because that is where it will be stored you can also do it cur that is fine so if you just run it it is running fine and if i submit this it's going to be working fine you see it is it is indeed working fight you're getting a correct answer uh that is how you can easily space optimize this particular stuff so guys i hope you have understood all the three so guys i hope you have understood the recursion the memorization the tabulation and the space optimization so just in case you did please 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 make sure you like this video and to follow our tradition please make sure you comment understood under the comment section that does give me a lot of motivation to keep making such kind of videos and yeah with this i'll be wrapping up this video let's meet in the next one bye bye take care